Well, there she sits. She's been down for about three weeks, maybe four. I think it was three. Primarily because of this. You never really get to see this side, but you've seen this side many a times. So I believe the car just sat angled for a long time at JDS while I was getting the bodywork done. I didn't have the tank drained, so water backed up into the check valves, corroded them. I also had another fit and fail, so I started having a bunch of leaking issues right before IA. This is like the day before in Port Alliance. It was crazy. I was hurrying, messaging social media, trying to get fittings like crazy. You can see now I bought extras, learn from that. I've had this system in the car for about six, seven years. And over the time it's been really trouble free, but I've had a cancer growing in the system and it's finally reared its ugly head. And it was stage four for the past couple of years. It was like stage one, stage two cancer. I'm not making fun of cancer. Please don't take this seriously. It's just a figure of speech. And what that cancer is, is copper clad aluminum power cables cca power cables guys remember this stay away from cca power cables this this junk right here cca look at that terminal right there look how just burnt and bad that terminal is back here look at this wire it's just a POS over the years I guess corrosion crept in oxidation crept in and that power cable just over time got worse and worse and worse cancer settled in and it just wasn't letting power pull correctly with the small leaks I got it down to a very slow leak and I could have taken it to IA, but because of this copper clad aluminum BS, the pumps was running so much and they were pulling so much amps for two reasons. One was the BS four gauge CCA wire. And two was what I came to find out was a very poor ground on the system. So that was a huge, bottleneck also the hard the high flow off the four gauge and then the restriction off this 12 gauge because of those two factors the wire supply wire the pumps everything is running so hot the wire was so hot i was just blowing fuses blowing fuses 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 just blowing fuses i was buying fuses by the lot just because this the power cable was just running so hot i was going through so many fuses Last two summers, maybe three summers, if I use the air too much, I'll probably use a fuse a day. Let's start off with talking about the leak. This fitting here, this fitting developed a leak right at the push to connect side. This fitting is with the air coming out that's filtered to go into the manifold. The second problem, like I was saying, I believe the tank still has water. I haven't opened it yet. These fittings and the car being jacked up for so long, rotated everything. And I believe water got inside here and just corroded these check valves. Now let's talk about the wiring, the grounding issue. The entire system was grounded by this 12 gauge green wire. Everything was connected to this post. We had the two grounds from the pumps to this post, the main ground connected to this post back there. So those three grounds were connected to here. He also, the installer, shaved here, cleaned here well, cleaned here on the, also underneath the relay and was using the aluminum as a ground. Now aluminum works fine as a ground, but it's only 60% as effective as steel or iron. So the pumps were grounded here. The main system was grounded here. The manifold, the, the relay, the ECU, everything was grounded here, which was grounded through the aluminum. I just don't get it. I never saw it. I never noticed it before, 
but it ran like that for five years. No wonder I was having heating issues. This is crazy, crazy. Rule of thumb, match your ground to your supply gauge. You run an eight gauge, you run a four gauge, run an eight gauge or four gauge ground. Since then, what I've done, I've taken the ground wire off of here and I've gotten this four gauge power cable. See this black power cable that's into the carpet? That is going now to the chassis. I cleared this post because I only had a little bit of four gauge and it's closer to the chassis ground that we have. So I moved all the grounds over here. I put the pump grounds to here and then I ran that old ground wire, not to the aluminum, but directly to the relay. So now the ECU and the relay is properly grounded to here. But you're saying, but Kivon, you're saying, you just said the grounds need to match the supply. So if you look, this is a 12 gauge ground. These are 12 gauge wires. Actually, look, this says 10 gauge wires. So those are 10 gauge, it says right there. So these are 10 gauge wires, this 10 gauge ground, and it's pulling through the system, so that's fine. The main power is coming from the relay and it's going to the pumps. The ECU is a small gauge. So it's matching here. So now I shouldn't have a power issue anymore, except for this BS copper clad aluminum. And that's where this comes in. This is some four gauge welding wire from Tractor Supply Company. This is poor copper welding gauge. It should be able to pull and take a lot of amps. And I'm gonna pull out that old CCA and put this nice fat four gauge hefty chunky wire. I'm also getting rid of this pain in the butt screw type fuse holder and I'm hoping to mount this one style that's a pop top. Same mini A and L fuses like these but it should be a whole lot more serviceable. The other thing I mocked up, like you see, this is a mock-up print and this is the final print I have bolted down. So I mocked up this and we're going to stick it to the side of that fuse box there to hold down that fuse holder. Uh, once again, extra fittings. I went ahead and bought brand new pumps. The pumps, these pumps are still okay. I'm refreshing the system and I just want to have next six years with zero trouble. It's six years of trouble free. It's given me a nice six years so far. Let's try and get six more years with no issue at all. We've got some brand new front struts I need to put on also. Hopefully I'll get that on soon. But let's go ahead and tackle the power delivery and then we'll tackle updating the air system. We got the cowl out, we got the battery surround out, got the burnt up copper clad wire stuff out. Here you can see some of the silver in the wire. That's the aluminum with a little bit of copper on it. And like I said, aluminum is, well, I know it's 60% conductivity of steel. The wire is indeed nice and malleable and soft compared to the welding wire but the welding wire is still manageable and move around a bibble, a malleable, I don't know. Gonna go ahead and pull it back through, tape it up and pull it back through how it was taken into the car through that part. We got the side panels off, the seat up, 
and I got this back part unbolted. I'm just running through the car that way into the trunk. We got the power cable ran and I made a lot of slack in here in case we want to put a secondary battery in this corner. I have enough as a supply and then we'll from the battery go to the air system. Don't forget in a previous video I showed you guys how I achieved a very nice level air out with those valves so I'll put a link here. And it's, it's a real cool video showing you how to tune your air out to have air out nice and level. As you see, I put an abrasive cover onto the power cable because it's rubbing against the seat. There's also going through that hole. I put that abrasive thing to protect the power cable. Ran through the side sill. Didn't have to remove everything because I used the other cable to pull it through the channel goes up through there once again coming out from that bush in going to put the fuse box here put the connector and get all that done next So this bracket I made worked out really well. It sits well, I stuck it with some VHB, the fuse cover could still come off. I ran the wire through there, anchored it in this side, it's nice and solid. Now I'll cut a short piece. I need to go to the positive terminal to this side. Let's get this set up. This side is going to put into the fuse box. This side we're putting into a four gauge terminal. And we're gonna put that four gauge terminal on. Yeah, let's go down to six. Really give it a hell of a crimp. So four gauge didn't work. Let's see if we can use the same terminal on the six gauge side now. All right, that's hella strong now. So all this four gauge, I put the teeth, I put the teeth on six gauge. The four gauge crimp didn't really work as well, but that six gauge crimp tooth worked extremely well. Interior is placed back together. Our supply wire is coming from the battery. Nice and neat, tucking underneath, bolting and real nice and strong and sturdy. And then our outputs going back. You're, cup, you're cutting this and you're seeing copper. If you look at that tip, just the tip, you can actually see the copper strands wearing against the cutter. So it's really nice wire. No stupid CCA wire to overheat and ruin your shit. Ooh. If I did my measurements right, I'm still able to replace this fuse with everything on. My measurements were perfect. You can see 
the fuse holder right there positive sides all nice fuse holder in I could reach in and squeeze get the cap off change my fuse put the cap back on nice and secure there's no copper touching no wires beautiful it's 7 p.m. it's getting dark so I need to hustle now get this redone replumbed get the new pumps on get it into the car and hopefully get this car moving for the first time in three weeks a quick word of the wise do not remove the valier check valve that comes with your leader hoses and put in one of these smc check valves these smc check valves work great dry they do not like corrosion these pumps come with check valves from valier keep these check valves on do not replace it Getting the new pump situated, the wires come bare, and instead of like the previous setup that the guy did, electrical tape them to kind of hide it, I went ahead and got some heat shrink and some sleeve in and got that on. Much nicer looking, way more presentable. Another win. Man, it's another sweltering mid 90 day. Humidity high as F. But we gotta get this car going. Ran out of time last night. Let's hopefully hope <laughs> that we can finish up today. Let me show you what I've done off camera since. So, from the front side, you would see I got the secondary pump on. So now we have the two new pumps. We have our black leader leader hoses which are really nice and also our nice braided power cables so we don't have any electrical tape anymore I've added a quarter inch fit into this plug here that was just a block off plate and that's going to a quarter inch line to this quarter inch ball valve that's rated to 400 and some psi so that's going to be the tank drain it never really had a water drain before so uh, hopefully huh? Okay, I'll go. Thank you. I'm uh, talking to the camera. Yes. Say hi, camera. Hi, camera. Okay. <laughs> so we added that quarter inch with that ball valve. That ball valve is a 400 and some psi ball valve. Didn't have a drain before, so there really was nowhere for the water to go. So anytime I did any maintenance, there was a lot of water in there. I don't want to have any more corrosion in the system. We do have the water separator that's going to the manifold. So that's always been there. That's always been a good thing. 
But now we have an actual drain, so it won't back up into the check valves. And let's see the back end. On the back side, we had the two SMC check valves here. Now we go in straight in, we have the Vi-Air check valve. Everybody said just keep the Vi-Air check valves, forget about the SMC check valve, and I'm probably going to agree with that. With the new wires, we have our nice braided protection. On this side, we had to extend the ground wire to get over the lug here. On this side, we extended the power wire to get to the relay over here. Then we connected out all our grounds to the big fat four, four gauge that goes into the carpet and goes into the bottom. And then over here, we have the old ground bridging into the relay base. Help power wires to so go into the main from the supply. Everything is set up now. All we need to do is fill this with some air and test it out. See if our joints here that we put our tread compound, if they sealed really well or if we're going to get some bubbles. Because I changed this fitting also back here. So I always have a quick disconnect and in my bag of goodies I have a Schrader valve. Always with the car. Got an inflator also, always with the car. One cool thing of having an air system is have these things and there's a pain in the butt to do one-handed. I'm in, Never mind. Let's get some air in there. Boom. My other one like this that has actual lock on end broke. So I'm using this one that I don't like that I have to hold on there. This is up to 140. I'm going to pressurize this bad boy and see if it's going to leak. So the first one we want to test is the front fit in here, which is our drain. Put some soapy water on there. If there's a problem, you're going to see bubbles. Yes, there's bubbles on there now. That is because of the soapy water. If this was leaking, we would see big, big bubbles coming out like that earlier picture I showed you guys. Let's go to the back now. Oh, yep, look, so look, we got it. We got a leak here. Small leak, but it's a leak nonetheless. I think this, I just got to push that cable in better. So let me dry my hands. There's also this gray part. You gotta pull that gray part out. You pull that gray part out, it locks the, the push to connect fit in a whole lot better. Let's see now. Ooh. So this fitting, you need to leave this um, pipe sealant tread that I use, you need to leave it for like an hour. And we left it overnight. Get it nice and saturated down with some soapy water. You yeah, see how much, how much bubbles come out from there? So that's definitely a problem there. But this seems beautiful. So this part here is A-OK. -okay. Let me, because right now with this pressure, this fit is locked in hard. Also, although it's leaking, it's actually squished in really hard. So we need to release the pressure. And then let's try and reseat that fit. Let me get soapy water off. Let's try our drain valve. But it's a good thing. We know that it's so low with the pressure of stuff coming out, we're going to blow out some water and drain out the tank. So you push in and you pull out. It says a brand new fitting. I would hope it not leak, but I guess it is. So that's pushed in all the way. Pull the cap out. We popped it off. Oh, you bastard. A brand new fitting. Let me give it a clean slice here. 
and push it in and see if it's just the hose itself that's messed up. So this is a line cutter and it cuts the line in a way that you don't deform the end and it stays true and circle instead of like an egg. So let's just go and see it. That's probably just old, but let's just snippity snip snip. Thankfully I have some extra here so I could just go ahead and just cut this end off and still be fine. So we move in a little bit past the line, push down, snippity snip. Should be a brand new good cut. DOT with the nylon inside because this is a high pressure line. And we push it in. The verdict is, ooh, look at that. No more air. So the it was just a bad end. Um, taken in, taken out, it just gets worn out and they leak. So by giving a little snippy snip snip, no more leaking. Sweet. And we're building pressure. Oh yeah. With the new pumps, the proper ground, everything like that, it's really much quieter than before. So really cool, really excited about that. The blacked out leader hoses look real nice. The no tape on the ends looks real nice. Wiped it down some. You don't really see the drain that much unless you really look for it. But overall, real good. We bench tested it so we shouldn't have no leaks. So it shouldn't bleed air. But also, how warm this is gonna get. I gotta put the cover on, just have it off for now. But there's the fuse. There's the line there going back into the car. We got everything back on. That's very cold to the touch. That is not warm at all. So I'm happy to say the G is mobile once again. Oh my goodness. The pump ran two cycles. This is not even hot. That is the best part. Please say no to copper clad aluminum. Whoever designed or came up with that itch, they need to be taken all back. Get pure copper, look for Amazon, make sure it's good clean copper, go track the supply, get some welding wire. Those things have to carry a lot of amps, so it has to be really good copper. I think this is it for this video. Thank you for coming along. We're still at 166, that is so awesome. It takes time to put these videos out. I would have finished this yesterday if we didn't have to stop and do takes and do videos and stuff like that. So I do invest a lot of time to create content for you guys. There's only over 80% of you guys that are reoccurring viewers that don't subscribe. I know it's annoying hearing this, but it helps the channel. Please subscribe if you can. If you enjoy this content, if you learn something, please subscribe. And until next time, guys, y'all take it easy.